don't want to go live. Okay. So, hello everybody, and um, welcome to one of Kitronics Tech Talks. I'm Kevin, and today I've got Dave here with me. So, Dave's one of our technical guys. So, he's going to answer all the difficult questions that make them along. Um, as ever, we've got Mark manning the questions on YouTube. So, if anyone does have any questions, feel free to type them in. Uh, they'll get passed to ourselves, and we'll do our very best to answer them for you. So, uh, today we're going to cover a product which is new to ourselves. We've just bought it out. It's called the Lab Bit. Um, they will show you this in a minute. And yep. what's nice about this product is it's it's aimed at a, probably a slightly younger age group um, than a lot of the products we've produced in the past. And we'll explain that in a second. Um, so, Dave, do you want to start by showing us the product? Uh, yep. or so, here, here's a lab bit, and I shall just switch to my other camera and we'll have a quick look at what's in the box. You're a bit bigger. Okay. So, um, comes in this nice reusable storage box. And then in here uh, we have, there's a, a booklet, which we'll go through in a minute. There's the actual board. Um, I've cut the antistatic bag earlier so that I didn't have to get scissors out. <laughs> uh, a little battery cage to power the board, uh, wheel and a tire. So you can use the wheel without tire or you can put the tire on the wheel and it just pops straight on. So I'll just get rid of the box. So this is the lab bit board. Um, the wheel just presses on the motor. So that's now on there. So this board, we've designed it for Educational use, probably at the top end of primary school, that kind of, um, we're learning to code, we want an all-in-one thing, we want something simple for the teacher to use, and we've thought a lot about how the teacher will be teaching and what features will help the teacher to use this effectively. Um, the, just put that out of the way a second. The board itself, it comes with this um, booklet. This is sort of an introductory booklet. Um, so it shows you what you get in the kit. It's quite similar to the other booklets we've done recently. Um, shows you a little bit about micro bits, how to get programs onto the micro bits, the assembly procedure, which uh, tire on wheel, wheel on that lab bit, plug batteries in kind of, it's not a very onerous assembly. Then to actually use the lab bit, we've developed some custom blocks, which we'll show you in a minute. So there's a little bit about how to get those. Then the center page of the book, so it'll sit flat. We've got the uh, what, what's almost a mini poster of what the lab bit is and all the little features on it. Uh, that's better in focus now, isn't it? Let's zoom in a little yeah. bit. This thing keeps getting in the way. Right. So on the board itself, I'm going to show you on the poster and then I'll show you on the actual board. Uh, there's some power in here. There's actually power. Uh, LED indicator here as well, which um, has a little feature that we've put on so that you can tell instantly how how good your batteries are, which helps teachers when they're setting up. Oh, it's okay. Those are all green. They're good. Those all oh, those are orange. I need to check those later. Maybe all oh, those are red. I need to change the batteries. Kind of thing. It's very easy to see. So we'll show that in a bit. Then on the side of the board, there's a an ultrasonic. There's a twisty analog input, um, and there's a couple of but buttons. These are all inputs. So we've um, taken some dual coding advice on this and we've dual coded the board. So as well as them being inputs, they're also all blue. That helps people to associate inputs. Oh, I know, I remember now the inputs are blue kind of thing, just for ease of teaching. Similarly, the outputs are yellow. So the big yellow wheel on the motor, there's a volume control. Um, and this for the teacher's benefit is not requiring any software. You can just turn it down, which is a, a good feature. Then there's the there's a, a set of traffic lights, so you can do your classic traffic light experiment. There's a dice, so you can use it as a computing extension to other things where you might normally use a dice, like probabilities or playing games, that kind of stuff. There's a whole rainbow of, of multicolor LEDs, which you can control the colors on, and then you can use those to output things based on the input. Um, and there's a speaker. I think I covered everything on there. Did we talk about the microphone? 
Oh, I missed the microphone. There's a microphone as well. So you can do like claps and noises and sound monitoring. Then the rest of the book <coughs> just goes through a little bit of the, <coughs> the blocks and the, the various bits and how you use them. Um, and then there are a set of online tutorials which guide you through a set of tasks that you can do with this board and um, sometimes a little bit of accessories like the make your own switch, for instance, some tin foil. So you can do your classic electrical, does it conduct, doesn't it conduct kind of um, experiments. So that's the booklet. Um, so here's the board again. So to use the board, um, you need a micro bit. It's compatible with V1 or V2. I happen to have managed to get myself a blue V1 and a blue V2, which is nice. <laughs> they just That plugs into the slot there. Um, and then you apply some electricity. And uh, you can power the micro bit up that way, or you can plug in the micro bits by your USB lead to the to the computer. So uh, I think the first thing to show you is actually this little power indicator. So you see it's quite green here. Um, what I've got, if I carefully swivel my camera over here, I've actually got it wired up to a bench power supply at the moment, rather than a set of batteries because I can change the voltage. So this, uh, this is showing me the voltage. I've got it set to five volts at the moment. And as I turn this down, as though the batteries are going flat. When the batteries start to get a bit flat, it's changed from green to orange. And then, so you know now instantly, oh, okay, it's okay to use, but my batteries are gonna be flat soon. I need to think about charging them or changing them. And then as I turn it further down, it goes to red. And that's, that's uh, the batteries are very flat. They need to be charged or changed. And that just works off the voltage. And that's, we think that's a really useful feature for teachers because that gives you a visual indication that the board is just, um, is okay or not okay in terms of its power. There are also some other indicators on here. So I've got no software in my microbit at the moment, but there's an indicator to show my buttons are working, for instance, just to try and help the, uh, the non-technical person to say, oh, okay, it's not working. Why is it not working? Well, I know my button's working, so it must be my software or something like that. And those LEDs would be useful if you were connecting an external switch as well, then, wouldn't they? Yes, uh, we will do some of that in a bit. Um, I've got some tin foil in a classic tin foil way, and I've got a plastic ruler. So while we're looking at power then, I mean, obviously we've supplied this with battery pack, but... Yeah, you could use a plugging power supply should you yes. wish. Yes, it's um, a standard uh, two point one mil barrel jack. It's center positive. Um, we actually sell a lead that is USB to two point one mil, which you could use with this quite successfully with a, a just a USB power supply, you know, like your phone charger type thing. Yeah. Um, so we got we got pots and things. Uh, shall we do some? I think that's the board covered. Um, yeah, so it's so, got pretty pictures on it. <laughs> great. I mean, shall I quickly show the website? Yes, yes. Let's go back to so I can share my screen. Then. Okay, so hopefully people can see this. So this is a some nice photography here of it, of it lit up and you can see all the features here that Dave's talked about. Yep. Um, and then again, we can see how it's supplied as a pack. And obviously it's quite easy to store this back into the box, isn't it, after you? Yeah, yeah, that's why that we went for the re reusable plastic box. Yeah. So yeah, you'd, you'd use it with some students, you'd put it away, you might get it out a few weeks later or pass it on to a different classroom, that would all work fine. Um, and then you can see the pricing here. So um, obviously it's quite a lot on this board, it's quite a big board. Um, so single board is £35, pounds, and it comes down to £32 pounds if people buy more than one, which is probably likely in a classroom situation, I, I would suspect. Um, 
I mean, there are some other benefits, aren't there, Dave? It's got like quite a nice protective cover over the front. Oh, yes, I didn't mention that, did I? Yeah. Um, and we've we've deliberately dropped it on the floor quite a lot. Uh, yeah. The clumsy development engineers. But yes, the cover, uh, catch the light on it. You can sort of see it covers the whole front there. Yeah, so all the electronics are behind that, aren't they? They're yes, not the back so the they're all visible, which means you can see them and the magic isn't hidden, but they're all protected. Yeah, and it makes the board easy to clean and things like that, should you wish to, between yeah. uses and things. So, um, yeah, that's that's kind of it. And then, I mean, we can see some of the features here that Dave will take you through. Um, and then, as I said, I'm going to show these later on. We, there's another video here showing some of the features, but we do have these links to the resources which run in the main code environment, which you're going to show later on. Yes, yeah. So those are online tutorials that run directly in the make code environment, so that they're really guide you through the process of using the board. Um, and there's also a link in the book somewhere which will take you to it. To the back, yeah. Yeah, yeah. On the... um, yeah so I can say we're sort of aimed at sort of seven to ten year olds. I mean, you, you could use this in early secondary education as well, depending on what you're Oh, definitely, for. yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, anywhere you'd use a micro bit, but we feel that the micro bit is actually quite well suited to uh, primary school use. Um, and once you've learned to use a micro bit, then you can progress to other platforms potentially in secondary schools. Yeah. And, you know, this board's got lots of sensors on it and lots of outputs on it, but you do also have the ones that are built into the micro bit anyway, and they're all still available to the user, aren't they? So, you know. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we might make a dice in a bit and then shake the board to roll it, for instance. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that probably kind of covers it off. The board is available now, it is in stock. So if people do want to, to purchase it, you know, that they can yeah. do that straight away. Yeah. Okay, so let's move. finish that off. Okay, so uh, shall oh, we go for a bit of code, maybe? Just put you back on the uh, main view. Okay. Uh, oh, host has disabled participant screen sharing. So give me two seconds. <laughs> Can't drive Zoom. There you go. Should be able to do that now, Dave. So do you see this as primarily being for, for classroom use, so over home use? Or do you, do you um, we intended it for use in classrooms, yes. Um, that's the website. Uh, because we feel that uh, the micro bit will, will work really well in primary schools um, because of the way the make code environment all works really well. And the, the features we put in it were, we thought about what a teacher needs to know when they're trying to teach a, a group of kids and that, oh, miss, it's not working. Why is it not working? You know, that kind of like ease of diagnosing, like the buttons aren't working, for instance, or the batteries are flat, those kind of things. Yeah. Okay. So I've brought up the make code environment. Uh, I just need to move Kev out of the way. So there's an extension for the blocks, which is here. So you just search for lab bit. And there's a picture of the board, so you can find the extension quite easily. And this then loads a set of custom blocks in here uh, with an appropriate little lab icon. Now, these blocks, um, I mentioned dual coding earlier. The blocks are dual coded as well to match. So the inputs, for instance, the analog input here is this blue block here. Um, so let's grab that and... Uh, Let's do some colored lights. So the light, the outputs are all coded yellow in block color, although on my screen that does look a bit like sort of baby poo rather than yellow. <laughs> um, but I can now, let's see, show a bar graph. There we go, that will work. Of, so I can read the analog input and I can show a bar graph. So I'm going to twist that and the LEDs up here will light up as I twist it. Um, so I'm just going to connect to my micro bit. So once you do this, this connect here, which is a little bit of a step, then when you change the code, you can just download directly to the micro bit by pressing this button. So I'll press the button and some things will occur. And it says downloaded. So now if I stop sharing so this picture goes bigger, you can see just um, just here, there's a rainbow of LEDs, and just here is my analog input. So as I turn this, I can get my LEDs to come on. As I turn it around, I'm back again. So it's really, really simple to use, and it's very 
we think it's very good for uh, people to just code in a, I'm going back to code, there in a very simple way. Um, so if we didn't want to inputs, we want to do, let's do sound. How noisy is my classroom, miss? So I've changed the, that to a sound. I'll just download it again. Do you have a question for you a minute, Dave? Just... Okay. Uh, uh, let's just stop the share. So if I make a noise. Okay. We've got a noise meter. Hooray! <laughs> So yeah, that. the questions we got um, is, is it possible, is there any means of connecting external temperature or light sensors to the board? Um, so for light sensors, you can use the Microbit's own light sensor. Yeah. Um, external temperature sensor, no, there's no external analog input. But the Microbit, again, does have... But the Microbit does have a temperature sensor on it, yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I suppose... It's what we're aiming at with the board, isn't it, really? We're aiming it. We were aiming at it being all self-contained so that you could get it out, do the stuff, and then put it away. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one of the main reason being is that you know, we're trying to... Um, this was our experience of teachers in, in junior schools is often they're not specialist teachers, are they? And, you know, no. um, we're trying to make it all as user-friendly for, for an average teacher as possible. Yeah. So if we do... Making a dice might be a nice one, mightn't it, for the, the showing of the tutorials. I might, I might um, skip, skip ahead quite quickly at this, but this is the tutorial section of MakeCo. So I've just clicked on the link on our website. It's taken me directly into the tutorial. We're going to make a dice. So there's some instructions about how to um, set up your lab bit, plug it in. Some stuff about LEDs and what we're using. So now we're going to find roll of dice. And... The nice thing is that the make code tutorial sections, because we've written the tutorials, they remove all the extra blocks that you don't need for the tutorial. So it makes it simpler to follow. So I've got to find the roll the dice button. There it is. And I've got to place it in the on start. And I can choose a number between one and six. Pick a number, Kev. What number would you like? Uh, three. Three. So I can type three from my number or I can slide my slider to three. Um, and then I press next. And now we're going to do the, the connect and download. Now, because I've opened a new make code editor, my connection is needing to be reconnected. This is quite clear, as you can see the blue blocks, but well, I know they are starting forever are blue anyway, but the, you know, the, the yellow blocks there aren't they indicating that uh, it's an output. Hmm. Didn't connect, did it? Is that because this is still connected, maybe? Right. Well, the old school way of doing it. Oh, I've clicked open. That was a mistake. <laughs> I don't want to open it. It's all gone a bit wrong, Kev. This, this hex file, if you drag and drop it onto your microbit, which appears in your finder as a thing. So if you can't pair, you can just drag and drop onto the microbit to program it. And can you see the, let me stop share so we get the picture big. So the dice is showing me three. Yeah. So the tutorials take you through um, a load of things like that. There's one for, that's the share screen. So the, this one, um, as you click through, you can do button pressing and it'll make the dice roll and those kind of stuff. And there are hints that show you the what code you should have got in case you can't figure it out. Um, the make code tutorials really work really well. Um, what else could we do with it? So I mentioned... Should we try that on shape one that you talked about? Yeah, let's, let's just freestyle a dice. So I'll just get rid of this lot. So I want to roll the dice and I want to do it when I shake the board. And I probably want the dice to just pick a number because when you roll a dice, you want a random number. So you can bring this into maths. 
for random number uh, and probability type lessons, that kind of stuff. Download that. See so this this editor was still connected, which is why I couldn't connect my other editor. So now I've got a. Uh, let me stop that a second. So my dice rolled four there. That's six, three, three again, five, two. And the way that's working is that the, the micro has got an accelerometer on board that knows the micro itself has been shaken. Yes, yeah. So you can use all of the micro bit functionality. Um, for instance, I could make it play a tune as well. This is nice because it's going to show the... Yeah, let's just play it once. <laughs> what tune would you like? I don't know. Are you doing... Oh, I've not shared my screen, have I? I'm doing so well with the whole screen share thing. There we go. Right. So I'm going to play the entertainer. Wherever. Yeah. Which is horrible because it's going frown forever. So as soon as it starts, it goes back and restarts it. But you can see now the volume control. Uh, let me stop the share a second. So this is the volume control. There's no code for the volume control. It just it just turns the volume down. We thought that having to code a volume control would be a bad thing to do uh, because the the requirement to code something to make it turn off. Seem, seemed like it might cause a problem. You're a little bit quiet, Dave. Your microphone's I'm quiet again, am I? Oh, okay. Well, I have. So I've changed it to on button A. So now we can do the classic what's a button. Um, so if I download that, hopefully you can hear the entertainer there when I press the button. Yeah, yeah. But now we can use. Um, so the edge of the board here. Should we see it's large? The wrong one. Yes. Uh, just here, you can see the edge of the case is cut away and there's pads for crop clips. So I can crop clip onto there. And the other end of that crop clip is actually connected to uh, a bit of tin foil. So if I grab another crop clip, I can go to the other half of the switch and I can do yeah. turn the volume down again. <laughs> so you're connecting the pads together, aren't you? Uh, yeah. Great to know. But that, that could then lead to the is a, a plastic ruler a good conductor of electricity kind of experiment? No, because I get no tune. So th there's all those kind of things that you can do with the, um, the board. I don't know what else I got. Did I cover everything? I think the other things that interested for me are, I know that shows it as a wheel, but like you say, if you didn't have the tire on, that could easily form a poly system, couldn't it? You know, yeah, I mean, connect it to other, other things. Um, you know, you might drive. Take the tire off. Band around that, yeah. Yep. Channel. Um, so children could design some kind of thing they wanted to move, whether it's a Paris wheel or all those kind of things. <clears throat> yeah. And there's also, like you've just talked about, the connection pads for the buttons. There's also some there for motors, isn't there? Yes. So you can clip on an extra motor. Um, I've just uh, locked up a little bit of code that takes this and controls that. Um, so I, I can control the speed of my motor there. Um, and that code is... Here we go. Let's just turn motor clockwise at speed, read the input. So as I turn the input, I can control the motor speed. Uh, and then if you wanted to add another motor, um, we're about to go live with these. We're just waiting for them to actually be built in production. But this is basically the same motor, but with some crop clips on it. And I can just crop clip that on the edge of this board. Uh, and now I've got two motors. Although, see, but yeah, I can appreciate what you're saying. Both are spinning out. Oh. 
take that wheel off, it fits this motor. Yeah. And that would be incredibly easy then, wouldn't it, if you wanted then to use that, put that motor into... Yeah, if you want to put this motor over here on, in, a, in a fairground ride or something, yeah, you can use your lab bit to drive your fairground ride. And you can play fairground music at the same time. And <laughs> yeah, it, it, it feels like a really fun board that's reasonably well put together in terms of like inputs, outputs, trying to follow the curriculum through, dual coded with the blues and the yellows. Um, yeah, and I don't know what else to say, really. I think for people that don't, can do we just tell people what ultrasonic is? Because I haven't talked about it. Oh, it yes, okay. So on the end of here. Should we go large on this picture? Yes, let's go large. Yeah. So on the end, uh, this, this little unit here is uh, an ultrasonic sensor. Um, and it measures distance. It's just like the backup sensors on your car. So one of these is a, a, like a speaker, and it sends out a pulse of, of noise at ultrasonic frequencies, which is why you can't hear it. And then that pulse of noise reflects off a surface and comes back. And the other side is a microphone listening for ultrasonic frequencies. And because you know how fast sound goes, you can make a distance calculation to say a thing is, I don't know, maybe two centimeters or five centimeters or 10 centimeters away from your uh, board. One yeah. of the tutorials uh, takes you through how to use the ultrasonic sensor. And I think it builds up uh, like a little keyboard. So as you move your hand, you can change the pitch of the notes. Mm -hmm. So you can play tunes with your lab. But... From a user point of view, not, it's not scary anyway, is it? It's just a block that will tell you how. Oh, to it, it is. Um... Distance measurement. Let's that it's an input because it's blue and you can measure the distance in centimeters or inches and it, it just comes back with a number that tells you how far away something is yeah um, Fantastic. the um and, and with gear that's totally round make code code not really not, not not the likes of python or anything because of the age yes. group it's aimed at. Yes. because because we um we're aiming it at the primary school market to start with. And that kind of, I don't know, seven to 10 year old age, a lot of those um, children won't have very much coding experience. The make code block environment is basically the next step on from scratch, which is where a lot of primary schools start. Um, so if you imagine uh, learning to read, when you learn to read, you start with picture books with no words at all. That's scratch. Uh, make code is sort of picture books, but has a few words. Um, and then Python or other languages, which are all typey, are of course word words. So mm -hmm. they're like books that you actually read. Yeah. So I, I see the progression in the the sense in that progression. Um, in the make code environment, you can flip to uh, text coding. Let's share that. Yeah, it's your JavaScript, can't you? Yeah. So Python. this is that code in JavaScript, and there's also a Python syntax. So if you're feeling um, like you want to type Python words, you can do that directly in the make code environment. The microbit itself is also programmable in MicroPython on a MicroPython website. So the Unit itself doesn't limit you to make code. It's just that we've written the tutorials in make code to start with because we believe that's the right target market for the board. It's the beginner, non scary, easy to put stuff together quickly, get a result type market. Great. I've got one last question then, Dave. So, yep. whilst controlling the rainbow or motor, can you program the micro LEDs to simultaneously show an image or message? Yes. Um... Let me just share screen, pick the wrong window. Right, so uh, what do we want it to say? Let, let's, um, make, make it show a heart for, Uh, I don't know, a second maybe on when I press the other button. Mm -hmm. When I press one button, I'll get noise. 
I press that button, I'll do that. If it shakes, I'll get a dice. And, and if I turn the thing, I'll get the motor going. Um, so I'll download that. And then. Stop that. So you, you used to do that again, can't you? So I've got this one for, for the motor and I've got that one for the noise and I've got this one for the heart face. And if I shake it, it says six this time. Yeah. So yes, the whole thing is you, you can do a lot of stuff all at once and you can do things like if I turn this and then press that button or, you know, combinations make the dice go or change the traffic light sequence. So you can use pedestrian crossing buttons on the traffic light sequence and maybe you could have a little flag on the motor that waved around or something like that. And yeah. you can make the motor go forwards and backwards, clockwise and anticlockwise. So. Right. Well, yeah. I think that's great. Switch my camera back. Yeah, I mean, um, there's there's a lot of stuff in there. I think we covered a lot quite quickly then, but um, yeah. Well, that's the whole point of these, isn't it? It's more of a overview of the product. Um, you know, we do have more in depth videos and resources and those kind of things, haven't we? So yeah, yeah. And if anyone's got any questions, they can just drop us an email and and we'll answer them. Yeah. Great. Brilliant. So let's go back to this. So yeah, great. Thanks today, Dave. And um, thanks everybody for, for watching. As ever, these videos are always available on YouTube to catch up to. If you want to watch this again or um, view one of our older videos, then add them over there and they're all there for you. And hopefully we'll be doing another one in, in a few weeks. We'll talk about doing one on one of our newer boards. So yep, a couple yeah. of weeks. Stay tuned for okay. more videos soon. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. All right, bye. bye.